Good evening, uh, I'm Ray and I'm here tonight with Ben. Uh, we're going to have a chat about the latest events uh, concerning Kings of War in Ontario. But as a bit of a disclaimer and preamble, I am having a beer from the Great Lakes Brewery, uh, Octopus Wants to Fight. And I've been informed that there may be the occasional swear word said during this conversation. So if that offends you, please turn this off. Otherwise, you've been advised. Uh, hi, Ben. How you doing, mate? Good. Glad to have you on tonight. Um, looking forward to talking to the leader of the Premier Club in Ontario. The, the only and currently uh, best club of uh, Southern Ontario. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that I have in my mind for future projects and events that I have currently underway for Crossroads. Um, because the Murder Garage Mafia, uh, their reign of terror, I think, needs to come to an end, or at least be challenged. <laughs> reign of terror, yeah, sure, let's call it that. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> but, but you and I were both at uh, King Beyond the Wall 4. Yes, we were. And I had the fortunate pleasure to have a game with you during that tournament. Yeah, I got super lucky and actually won that game, so... Well, you know, reflecting back, like we, we can go through and I'll go through some of what I thought were the mistakes I made. Because because every time it's always good when you're playing a good good opponent because you can go, shit, I did this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, and I did this right. And you were gracious enough afterwards to, to talk to me and say, you know, you could have done this or you could have done that. Um, no, and, I, I think it was more fear. <laughs> it wasn't well, me, it's me trying to say you did anything wrong. I, far be it for me to say I'm a better player than you, mate. Not, not in the slightest. Uh, but fear and the Death Star will keep us in line. <laughs> we keep open, yeah. Uh, you know, actually, that's one of the, the interesting points is you having come from playing Trident Realms and me playing Trident Realms, the army I always feared playing with my version of the list was Elves. Exactly. And, and you playing Elves and knowing Trident Realm. It wasn't like I could pull any tricks on you. It wasn't like you were surprised by anything on my list. Like you knew what I had and you knew how to defeat it. So Yeah, it goes it goes a long way when you play against somebody who who plays a list that you've played a lot. And the one thing I'm known about around here is more being a try to realm player than anything else. So um we did have you uh here at the garage uh, a few weeks before um can be on the wall. Uh, we were lucky enough that you were actually down and playing a bunch of uh, practice games. And uh, yeah, I uh, gamed you completely and talked you into playing Trident Realm. So <laughs> I, was, uh, I was quite happy about that. So, Well, because uh, the games I was playing in the, in the pre-games was my Order of the Green Lady. And yes. I designed the monster to fit the Order of the Green Lady. <laughs> yes, you did. I was like, here's my super fast monster it's going to go with my flying order of the forsaken um, i have two hordes of them and absolutely run rampage and uh and then you play trident realms <laughs> yeah. so i i guess that's one of the the gracious points is that you are kind enough to offer up your garage uh, on a fairly frequent basis to uh anyone who's in the mississauga hamilton waterloo region who wants to come out and play yeah yeah, I, um, uh, part of it is laziness and part of it is just trying to make sure that people have a place to play. Not everybody wants to go to a, a game store, especially one that closes at, you know, uh, what, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Um, and the other thing is, is, well, a lot of us, as you know yourself, mate, uh, some of us has, have kids. And sometimes it's easier to get a game in at, um, you know, 9 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning. and I'm very fortunate. There's a lot of guys who are willing to drive down and uh, and come and bug me and you know have a drink, have a laugh, and um, and beat me in my own garage. So <laughs> why not? Well, I, I did appreciate the invite, and I do plan on taking advantage of it a bit more into the future with my move down to southern Ontario, uh, out of the capital region. And yeah. closer to the uh, heart of Kings of War in uh, Ontario at this point in time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of lucky how we've actually lucked out that um, we're in that sort of mecca. Like, I'm not sure on if that was um, Alex and, and Steve and, oh, yeah. and John who kind of made that happen. But we're really lucky to be around here. 
I, I completely agree. Um, I, I would tip my hat to Alex and John and, and Steve and, and to them for, for really establishing a solid community that's grown over the years uh, with higher numbers of people attending. Uh, that being said, I don't want to leave uh, Tim out and what he's trying to uh, build up in uh, Eastern Ontario by Ottawa, between Ottawa and Montreal, because uh, he's beginning to have the events at his house and host uh, people coming over and playing. So yeah, Tim's well, doing his part. I, I have warned him that, uh, that I may come up his way at some point in time. I mean, he did say something about possibly coming up this weekend. And I'll be honest, it was, it was tempting. <laughs> uh, so. I guess that's that's where the Murder Garage Mafia began. Began, and how many members do you currently have in that club? Currently, there's the five of us. It's uh, myself, um, my one of my longest, oldest friends, uh, Mr. Cooper, James Cooper. Then we have a uh, James Smith, uh, Nathan uh, Cerrone, uh, who I'm lucky enough to work with, and he's he's that nut job that paints thirty thousand um, thirty thousand points a year and just three prints anything under the sun uh he's also a tool maker like myself and i it's it's just weird talking to him about stuff uh and then there's uh mr mike lahey our elder statesman and uh possibly the best player actually out of all of us if you just get it out of his own head so we'll keep growing we have an honorary <clears throat> member that may or may not be john mccready um who has a shirt so screw you you're mine um but uh yeah it's the idea is to kind of you know grab people bring them in get them out here get them playing games there's no there's no shame in playing games like people need to just stop pretending that they don't have time for these things and, and get out even if you don't have their, your painting done like just come out and play like have the laugh have roll some dice have a bit of bit of fun you know? and and that's exactly it, it um I don't know what the rules are in Ontario um, because most of my experience was when I was down in Annapolis in Maryland, but for one days for people playing in garages, even if all you have are, are the bases and, and hell, even if you don't even have the bases, if you just call up and say, Hey, look, I'd like to come out and play. Can I borrow somebody's army? Like I can create an army for you. I can, I can give you, lend you the models that you can use on the table and you can give it a go. Yeah. And for, for one day tournaments, um, normally down south, my experience was that painting wasn't actually a factor in the scoring. So you can come out, you can play, you know, if everything's not painted, everyone understands you're just trying stuff out. Yeah, no, up here, I mean, even at King Beyond the Wall, Nathan, again, the nut job that he is, he had four armies there. He had his own. We had a guy come <clears> down from Montreal who he put up uh, and drove down to the event, which is no small task to begin with um gave him an army to play and then he had two additional armies one of them that he just printed painted and put together for uh for his friend mark just so he would have an army that was painted to play the man is <laughs> he really uh, is solid i i don't quite have that his level of armies but i definitely have no one three, does i i, no I have three does. armies painted so if, it's, if somebody wanted something i could definitely well, I mean, we've uh, we've had guys come out um, where they've just had bases themselves. Absolutely. I mean, it's it it we do always prefer to have like a model or two on a base just so you can see, oh, that guy's got a gun, sort of thing. But I remember my first um, my first tournament I played with these guys. Uh, I brought out the uh, Twilight Kin at the time, which had a whole bunch of hot glued down uh, dark elves onto bases <laughs> that mostly fell off before the end of the night. And it was great. It was it was fantastic. Uh, I met a hell ton of people. Went out for a drink afterwards and a and a bite to eat and laughed. And yeah, I mean, if you can get out, if you can get out, uh, get to the store. I mean, even if you can't, sometimes you might even be able to grab a lift from somebody. And you know, like I keep saying, get out, have fun, get away from the house. You know, like, nerds don't have to be in the in their garages and basements anymore. Some of us prefer garages, but you know. And some prefer basements, so I guess it's a personal basement. choice. But uh, I, I think that's the uh, public service announcement. If you want a game, if you're interested in playing and you're in the Ontario region, go to Kings of War Ontario and, and just yep. poke that you're interested in a game. Yeah, poke the bear. Trust me, we've we've tried to connect with a whole bunch of people. We had uh, one, well, 
uh, Christian who came down from uh, yep. from back and played. Look, that was his fourth game. When yeah, he started the tournament, and two of them were the night before the tournament. So, I mean, why not? I mean, just why not? So, absolutely. So let's let's just go into the uh, tournament that we had, which was King Beyond the Wall Four. Sure. So this was in August, Hamilton, uh, yep. twenty three hundred points. But the cool part was you had your Colossus, and you and I took very similar Colossus. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if you're slightly inspired by my uh, choice. Totally stole it from you. I saw that thing on the table and went, I'm taking that. Um, talked to John right at the end there and, and went, I need to know what the hell that was. And uh, yep, that was, uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not ashamed to say, you know, when you see something better than what you were playing, I'm, and yours was a hell of a lot better than what I was playing. I'm like, nope, I'm stealing that thing. Well, I, I take the compliment because mine was like, total speed it was speed 10 like i said it was designed with the wild charge d3 so it could go with the forsaken and just add the attacks because if the forsaken hits something and this thing comes in as well i'll win that combat like it doesn't yeah. really matter what i'm hitting yeah. so so that's how i designed it but then i come up against your list and, and the problem with my <laughs> trident realm list that i had was this guy's good he's speed 10 but nothing else in my trident realm list was speed 10. Yeah, that was kind of the problem I was... Well, I had a bunch of stuff that was speed 10. Right, so looking at your list, and, and I put it up here, like, you have your shooting. You had a lot of shooting. A lot of shooting. It's 102 shots. So, yes, I'm that guy. I didn't need <laughs> friends. I don't like people. <laughs> we kill people in a garage for a reason. The, the, you know, um, mostly from 24 inches away. It's That's, uh, that's kind of what we do here. <laughs> Uh, I, I had a little help putting this together again, Mr. McCready. Um, he kept telling me to uh, put more shots in and more shots in and more shots in. And uh, yeah, the bugger was right. So what can I say? <laughs> but but it was it was designed, I think, to beat a Trident Realm army. And the reason why I'm saying that is, is your cav goes speed nine. So nothing I have is quicker than your cav. And with brute yep. strength and nimble... Yep. like you, you hit with a ton of bricks yeah your dracons out do anything i have and them coupled with your monster which we'll get to uh, was enough power that i was worried about it and actually i really like the horde of the sea guard um it did really well in our game but i'll be curious asking a bit later as to how it was in the other games that you played yeah yeah so now we come up to your, but what was the favorite piece that you had in, in this list? Like what was the element that worked better than what you thought it was going to? Well, um, contrary to, uh, to certain uh, elf reviews, believe it or not, it was the, in, especially in our meta, it was the tree herder. Okay. Um, that guy anchors this entire list better than anybody would expect him to. Uh, our biggest problem down here in the, well, I wouldn't say it's a problem. But everything is def, uh, def five, def six. We run into a lot of shield breakers, um, a lot of guys that just don't go anywhere. Um, so the fact that he could kind of throw himself in and start punching people in the face and do some uh, just that little bit of damage and not have to worry about <laughs> about running away, yeah, he, he's he, he's kind of good. Like. Um, Especially when you have as many shots as I do, you gotta come towards me. So he's gonna find somebody at some point. So, yeah. No, I, I I completely agree. And you are one of the few elves who I've seen who's taken both a regiment and a troop of Silver Breeze Cav. That was yes. a, a yeah. Unique. I I really liked the uh, the troop. Um, it it kind of came came about by. I was playing a bunch of games. I only had the two unit with Blade Stalkers. I actually thought uh, again because of the same reason why I took the tree herder uh, with all the def five and def six and needing something. I had the um, four shamblers. I actually had a, a unit for a long, long time and I needed something that could hit in the side uh, with Bane chant. Now, as you realize, there's nobody with Bane chant anymore in the list. Uh, so these guys would come in, they'd hit the side and you put Bane chant on I'm like, yeah, okay, great. They've done something. And then I found that, 20 inches is a long way on the table. And normally you're standing on a hill and you're 20 inches away from absolutely everything. And your height six 
at the very least standing on a hill. So you can come flying down and run into a lot of people and do a, a lot more damage than you'd expect, especially in a flank. Um, that and their ability to take tokens or their ability just to, I don't want this unit to charge me. Here's a unit of, uh, of Silver Breeze that you have to deal with that's going to take you, a, you know, at least a turn to kill. And that's going to give me one turn to move the Glade Stalkers over or get them out of the way or back them up. And I've got one more one more time to uh, to hit something else. Okay. So then we come up to your monster, which is the monster that caused me issues. Um, yeah, uh, he caused a lot of people issues, especially the shambling didn't hurt anybody, but it was it was something that people went, oh, oh crap, and then you know decided not to do something they were going to do. So. Was shambling like a reduction in, did you get points for having it shambling? Shambling was a reduction if you, uh, uh, if you didn't have something, I, I think it was the speed. Yeah, I think it was the speed. Yeah. So shambling was zero points for me. Okay. So it wasn't a reject reduction, but at zero points at speed 10, I'm like, sure. Yeah. Okay. Where do I need to be? Okay. I'm still speed 10 and I still charge 20. It doesn't matter. And then I can turn sideways and. Do whatever the hell I want to if I needed to. Did you have surge in your list, or I have two sources of surge: Nimoy, and uh, who only has a surge of four, but one out of four. <clears throat> why not give yeah. it a try? Um, and the tree herder actually comes with uh, with uh, surge eight. So you were never able to pull off the twenty plus two d six attacks in the flank due to. Surge. I reminded two people that they had that he had surge. Um, and that changed what they were doing like midterm, which was fine by me. So it wasn't like, oh no, I got to move four units back or anything like that. But they would move forward and go, ha, you can't see me. And I would turn around and go, I do have surge. And they were like, I'm not going here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it was just a little extra, little, little extra tidbit that I could more use as a threat than anything else. Okay. I find the threat of surge is nine times out of ten a lot more powerful than the actual surge. So, well, maybe one of the reasons why in the future I might be looking at trying to play a surge army just because I, I want to get used to those mechanics, and I don't think uh, surge armies are in use in Ontario nope. at this point. And I, I, I honestly don't understand why we have one constant undead player. Yes, uh, Matt Landry. Um, with a beautiful and, army. Oh, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Like the man can paint. Yeah. Um, but uh, who else? I mean, yeah, maybe John and his uh, and his air elementals, but not much else. No, not much else. So this was the uh, map because we played uh, during round three at King Beyond the Wall 4. Yep. Uh, the key feature was the blocking train, I think, right in the middle with the obstacle, and the scenario was dominate. So it was a fairly, fairly simple scenario, but we needed everyone to be in that middle area, which you'll notice has a huge amount of terrain in it to provide cover against the 100 shots. Yeah. Um, I actually was really happy that we got dominate for this. Um, <laughs> again, like a little bit of fear playing against you. And going, what the hell am I going to do again? I'm like, Dominic, great. All I got to <laughs> do is aim at the center. That's it. I just got to aim at the center. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was kind of fun. So Cause I had the choice of the sides, and yes, I picked the top. Yeah, and, and I was I was quite upset, and then ended up working in my favor. But <laughs> well, I I picked the stop top because I didn't want you to have all your glade stalkers in that forest behind that flat difficult, just or, or even the obstacle, just shooting everything coming into the middle. Yeah, and, and I thought that was exactly what I wanted to do. Um... <laughs> so instead, I, I, instead I got lucky. So. Yeah, well, it, it, like I said, it, it did work out in my, it, it's, it's one of those things where it was like, I, I can, I got about halfway through deployment and I went, I think I can deal with this now. Well, so, you, you out, out, you did better in deployment than I did. Like, um, right, deployment's one of those things where you have to take responsibility for your own mistakes. Um, in, in my case, putting the fool in the middle 
was a mistake. Um, I, from my perspective, especially looking back at this now with this this like layout, I should have had my heart piercers in the middle to protect the flank, let the thule go through the forest top speed so that they have stealthy and cover. Yep. Uh, and then just accept the fact that your hundred and some odd shots will eat through my heart piercers and probably <laughs> one to two turns. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, um, I, I, uh, I kind of lucked into my deployment. I, I went, right, I'm gonna start doing something over here. And I got about four drops in where I started to go, oh, hang on a second. And, uh, and then, yeah, it kind of, it kind of clicked. Um, again, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to uh, sound like, oh, I knew exactly what I do, what I was doing or something like that. But no, I, it's playing against, um, an army, even an army that I know, but playing against an army and one with as much speed as yours did have, I was terrified of where you were going to put those, um, uh, your, uh, your worm riders in that. And I, I'm not sure on how it worked out, but the fact that I put, as you've got there, the Glade Stalkers, two of the units were on that right hand side, which just allowed me to delay. And that ended up being a lot of the game was me making sure that you couldn't come towards me. So, And, and that was it. Cause as much as your Silver Breeze Calvary hitting a defense five, defense six unit in the flank will hurt them, but not kill them. Hitting the thule in the flank, even and uh, with a regiment, is is pretty much all you need. That'd be like close to six wounds, and, and I'd be yeah. looking at a waiver then. So yeah. people tend to forget just how fragile thule actually are. I mean, I guess uh, their trident realms may or may not become the new hotness. Uh, with uh, I, I don't think so. I, with, like, with oh come on, doesn't the the newest uh, master doesn't he get his list run everywhere? Isn't that the idea uh, afterwards? <laughs> I don't like like uh, I guess that's a good discussion point. Do you see that happening? I, I don't see Trident Realm as being either a like netlist friendly or b newbie friendly. I would never recommend a Trident Realm list to somebody new. No, neither would I. But um, I mean, I lost a good I don't know twenty thirty games with my uh, Trident Realms before I figured out something that started to work, um, and I lose a whole bunch more once that build is figured out and somebody decides that they know exactly what to do against it and it, you you have to you got to lose more than you win you always you, there's no way in hell you're always going to win more than you lose it's just I, I guess unless you're you know alex coos or somebody who technically is the savant at this game and can you know plays once a month and it makes it look easy i guess but uh but no it's it's a it's a list that you you have to get used to, uh, because of the fact that it has ensnare. Everybody thinks, oh, well, you just make everything hit in the front. That's not the case, though. It never is the case in any game. You're gonna get flanked. You're gonna get shot. People will take shots at you know at hitting on fives or it's, sixes in your case. Stealthy or sixes cover. in my case, you, and I was like, like well, I get to reroll my ones. So and, and you have a hundred shots, so that's yeah. fifteen I sixes. Think, the big, the biggest actual, the biggest problem that nobody actually talks about uh, with with ensnare is its biggest, sorry, its biggest issue is once you get to elite or to vicious, the army crumbles because Absolutely. your biggest, yeah, your biggest thing is you keep hoping that people will roll these ones and these twos and somebody could roll six ones and if they've got elite. They're re-rolling them. Somebody can roll four ones on on the, and you're like, yes, you went from six wounds to you know to two, and with vicious they get to re-roll it, and it will swing that dice back hard really quick. Completely agree. Yeah. Well, especially but, against like a toughest three, toughest four army. This isn't this isn't what people think it is. It's not it's not an army where you know it's all defense six and it's got ensnare and it's no, it's not all the stuff with ensnare is dies to a stiff breeze and sometimes to a light rain like it, it it's it's not easy to play so no i don't think it, it's gonna really be but you know people are gonna try they I, have to see i don't see experienced players trying like i don't see alex going i'm gonna play uh trident realm or or <laughs> john even john like i don't see john going i'm gonna play like so if you're experienced you're probably looking at the list going 
it's a tough one to pilot and you have to have the right combination to, to, to win a tournament with it. Yeah. And you've also got to like that style of army and it's, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's not for, it's not for everybody. Let's just put it that way. So I, I did a deployment mistake. Heart piercers should have been sacrificed. The speed was actually a challenge because I didn't realize the Drake, like once I deployed everything, I went, I went, crap you, your your dracons and your monster have enough power to burn through anything i have so yeah. that caused me a bit, bit more nimble because if i lose one of my two uh, ocean worm riders that's that's half of my mobile punch especially without the soul so i had to be a bit more cagey on that side than i wanted to be um i think in recap of the game i dealt with the dracons and monsters I dealt with the glades on the left, though it took Ector far too long to accomplish it. Well, I, you very, you very nicely gave me a double one at one point in time, which uh, that swung a bit. A yeah, bit game. fourteen wounds and a double one to shooting equals the glade stalkers get to shoot back at full effect. It was, it was not, yeah. it, it was life, and I got the sea guard, but I, I didn't deal with your right flank, and your right flank was what won the game at the end of the day. Um, with the cavalry getting into the obstacles. So it was well played. You executed your right flank, and I wasn't able to do mine. I think we were kicked off for a minute there. Uh, just a bit. So, um, no, it, it was a good game. Glad we got to play you. But then you got to go for your round four opponent, which was Corey. Yeah, Mr. Reynolds. I went from playing you to playing Corey Reynolds. And that man, he, he, he's got a, a nice, bright, beautiful smile at, while he lures you in and tries to get you to take every bait and switch on the planet. And I kept saying, to, uh, I think the picture there of me, you know, holding my chin, trying to look like I, I know what I'm doing, I guess, um, was me going, that's a trap. And he said, of course it's a trap, but you need to take this trap. And I said, Corey, we're playing control. I'm not taking that trap and far be it to me for me is i really should have been a lot more aggressive that was the most exciting most enjoyable non-game i have ever played in my entire life he killed my alchemist curse mate that was it and beat me on scenario in control with five flying units five at least four of them it just masterfully done I did make one massive mistake. I actually thought that that where the hill was in that in on that left hand side, I thought that the edge of that hill was in a different deployment zone because I didn't measure it. That was that was my own stupidity. Um, You're almost talking like an engineer there, Ben. Uh, well, uh, come on, like let's 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 set boundaries here. All right, there's. <laughs> There's certain levels. I'm, I'm well, not at that lower level. No, just making an assumption that it's going to fit and not measuring it is completely something an engineer would do. Yeah, well, this this is true. Well, this is my tool making skills. I was out by I mean, just an under a half inch. All oh. right. So maybe I got maybe a little bit there, but <laughs> I'm never going to admit that, um, which would, again, be a thing that an engineer would do. Yes, I completely agree with that. <laughs> But yeah, I was I was a little bit out. I should have measured it again after playing yourself um, again, and then playing Corey. I was sweating bullets. Now this was even the day after, and I was uh, I pretended I was I looked as uh, uncool as what I what I did, uh, but no, uh, it was it was Murderer's Row in my last three. But, oh, it yeah, was Corey. You got to play me, Corey, and Alex. And Alex afterwards, and Alex is my absolute nemesis. I'm sure he's everybody's. I absolutely love that man. Uh, I I tilted just slightly because rats and their things that ignore everything under the sun and twice over. But um, but yeah, Cor Corey was a fantastic guy to play against. Uh, so, so, so just so everyone who who is listening can understand, your last three games where you got to play me and I ended fifth. Yep. Corey, who won the tournament ending first, and Alex yep. went it in second. Yep. So you got first, second, and fifth on yep. a 28 person ish tournament. Yeah. Or yep. no, it was more than that, I thought. Anyways, 
more than that, Ooh. first, second, and fifth at, yeah. at the last three games. Who easily any one of you could have won the tournament. Um, I was pretending to be. I, I've done quite well. I, I shouldn't be the Englishman that I am. I, I, I have done quite well in the, in the past year. And, and you deserve to do well. Like, you played well, and you brought a good well, thank you. So. Thank you. Um, but, no, I... Um, I think the only reason why Alex didn't, <laughs> didn't win is we we kind of goaded Corey into um, into challenging Alex uh, round one, which was a stroke of oh my god what have we done, uh, creating a nuclear submarine to destroy everybody um, uh, who unfortunately ran. <laughs> to that. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I like I said, I playing you, I. I'm not kidding when I say it was fearful going in. I, I, I knew the army you were playing. That was my only advantage playing well, against. I, I will most certainly echo those statements that I, I made my nervous mistakes playing you as well. So well, thank I, you. I, I, I think we both got the nervous jitters out and you were talking about recording a game for the future. I, I'm glad you didn't do that one. Cause I made enough nervous mistakes playing you. Cause I knew, <laughs> I, I knew that you had, new trident realm i knew you were playing elves which is my nemesis so i was like crap ben goaded me into playing this list he knows my list and he has the counter to my list like <laughs> so i was also like sweating bullets nervous going damn and, and, and like you said that could have easily been the game five game like yeah. me and you playing uh, that round so uh, well, do not I, sell I, yourself I, short i was i was completely nervous that game too I was shocked to find myself, and I know a lot of uh, guys in Southern Ontario will roll their eyes when I say this, but I really was shocked to find myself. Um, 0 and 3, and I, I think I think I was ahead in points at that point. Oh, in yeah, time. you were. Like I was, I you was were way up there. Number one, yeah. Yeah, and, and then I ran into Corey, who we tied on round six, uh, on turn six, damn it. Absolutely. We were tied on, on turn six, and turn seven was my nemesis. The, I'm, I'm I suck at turn seven, but you know, unless I'm way, way up, <laughs> but no. And yeah. And then I got into Alex and, uh, Alex, uh, and I absolutely murdered the crap out of each other. I loved every minute of the game after the first round of me getting shot to absolute crap and acting like a 12 year old who had just had his favorite toy taken away. Uh, yeah. Um, not ashamed to say it, but he was, he 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 got really unlucky with the two double ones actually, which kind of brought the game back for me. And if it wasn't for the way he had played after that, um, very easily could have swung completely the opposite way. But Alex is Alex, and the man just goes, "Oh, I'll do this instead," and all your stuff dies, and you're like, "What happened?" Like I, I had a bunch of units here, and now they're gone. So. With rats as well, which is odd because I, they're, you know, he never plays rats. He just only brings them out once. I, I mean, I, my only loss to him is with, anyways, future, future conversation. <laughs> so speaking of the future, I'm going to go into the Crossroads GT plug. You and I will both be there on yes, the 23rd and 24th of September. It's in New York. Yep. Uh, I, I think there is going to be a fair number of Canadians present because there's there's your team. Yes. The A team. Yes. And maybe a few odds and sods mercenaries scattered I about. I believe there is, uh, with yourself, there's 11. Okay. Um, uh, of course, adding the fact that uh, me being an Englishman and uh, and TJ being being an Australian. Um, Full Commonwealth. We're, we're the full Commonwealth at this point in time. We're just missing somebody from uh, from Jamaica and the uh, Canary Islands, I believe, at this point. But uh, oh, New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. That's true. But um, uh, as the Australians say, is uh, we we don't include those uh, those people. We'll use the word people. <laughs> well, at this point, <laughs> with twenty four teams that's uh, ninety six players it's yeah the largest single event in North America for sure it, it is amazing it really is and for anybody that's never done um, a, a tournament like this go out just get in your car get out there play it is unreal I was lucky enough to uh, play in four of the OTCs for uh, uh, war machine and hordes 
and they had 180 people, I believe, at one point in time. Um, but the atmosphere, the people, and that game, that game was good for its time and all the rest of it. But when you put 80 plus Kings of War players into a room, everybody becomes a Canadian. Everybody, oh, I can't believe that. Oh, look at this. That oh, you you really got screwed out of the way here. Had the time of my life last year. The absolute time of my life. I was getting tabled by Sean from the Aristocrats. Yeah. Um playing elf probably with his elves. It was his it was his elves at the yeah. time. And just couldn't believe I rolled four double ones in that game. Uh three of them mattered. And he kept offering me a, a drink, and unfortunately I don't drink. So uh, he, he, which made him even sadder because then he, he had nothing to offer me. <laughs> and at the end of the game where I was putting all my, well, everything that was dead because there was nothing left. He reaches down, pulls up his table and goes, oh, I didn't, I forgot to deploy this unit on the table. at the." <laughs> <laughs> and all I get, we did nothing but laugh after turn two, we did nothing but laugh. It was fantastic. It was unreal. I, the amount of everybody I met, everybody I played was was just fantastic. There were no arguments. The only time you ever heard about a judge call was somebody was saying, hey, can I do this? That was it. Nobody was arguing one, one way or the other. You know, um, Mike Rossi out there with his uh, with his kilt on is just bloody amazing. Um, <laughs> just uh, the characters, the people, everybody, absolutely everybody. It's competitive. But it is the most uncompetitive competitive event that you can ever go to. And I would agree with you. Like the only time you bring the judge over is really, can I do this? And is this in line of sight or not? Like yeah. sometimes it's, can you help me with line of sight? And it's whatever the ruling is. You're like, okay, cool. Let's yeah. let's go on. Yeah, I think I, I called the judge over once, and it was because the guy was telling me he I could see a unit of his. And I wasn't willing to just agree with them because it was so, you know, when you just get the corner of that, of, yeah. of that base sort of thing. And I went, mate, I'm not going to do this to you this way. I was like, no, we're going to, we're going to call. Uh, I think it was, it was Corey that came over and, and went, nope, um, you can, ju and I mean, just see it. And I was like, all right, guess what? I'm going to fuck you up now. <laughs> but I, I, you, you, it was it was just it was a joy to play every single the, and the armies there are gorgeous gorgeous some of the ones that they put up for players choice were absolutely stunning and you know just just a great atmosphere a great group of people not a not an argument held in the entire time it was it was it was just great and for anyone who's able to if if you're interested in coming down there might be spots random spots on the odd team if you're able to to show up um i'm not the captain for the aristocrat a team we do a competitive come with your home with your shielder on it and last year we came in second so i got demoted <laughs> zettelmeyer will be the captain this year but i do notice one member of the murder uh, garage mafia who is uh rather unique and has a bit of a way to go well you mean me <laughs> uh, I, was, I was talking about tim Tim, okay, so yeah, we met Tim for the first time last year at Crossroads mm -hmm. with a very a stunning beard. We'll just call it a voluptuous amount of hair that was on his face. Fitting for a dwarf player. Fitting for a dwarf player who he is now for some and he better grow it all back by the time the by the time uh, Crossroads come, or we might we we might kick him <laughs> off the team. We might it might actually bloody happen. So Tim, get your growing on. But uh, no, he he is he's gone from I don't know how many games he played before Crossroads. I think it was maybe three himself. Uh, maybe, maybe maybe two. Maybe two. I think yeah. I think he and I ha had two games before then. To um, uh, as he as you talked to him just recently uh, on here, yeah, he was three and two. That's fantastic. And the confidence level of, of the man is that he plays completely different. He approaches the game. I kind of peeked over on my first couple of uh, couple of games when when I could, uh, you know, to to see how he was doing and that. And it just wow, I I couldn't. I he he's come leaps and bounds, and he's 
he's absolutely he's picked it up like like no one's business but to be honest with you the four of us ain't going to try and win we we would love to don't get us wrong and maybe just maybe i'm i'm screwing with you here uh, (laughs) that lahe guy he's gonna catch some people out i'll tell you that much nathan nathan can bloody play oh he can't lucky yeah but tim tim's gonna be our bloody ringer you're playing against tim you're you're getting the uh you're getting the guy that's going to shock you the most. Like he, he's going to come out of the woodwork. I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure of it. I, I would probably love to look at his score last year versus this year and argue that he might very well be the most improved player in that tournament. You, agree? I, I would, I, I would, uh, I would agree with you. Um, just as I said, just watching him play the practice game that he played with his uh, his super secret army um that that he was trying out uh, against mike he got tabled but he played it a hell of a lot better <laughs> so, i could keep uh, saying this michael hay guy man you gotta watch out for him too but tim tim's the guy but so, no, we, yeah we're, we're not we're we're going to go and we played second last table last year had a blast doing it honestly wins and losses doesn't mean a damn thing come out have a drink oh like, no we, and, and just come out hang out play board games, play games. Um, as many people would say, the coolest thing is that you end up playing the games and then much like you and I did, you'll you'll shoot the shit. And when you're there at the hotel, you'll stay up until the morning uh, talking about all the activities, playing games and probably having one too many drinks. Yep. Well, I always say the best part about a tournament isn't playing the games. It's not... Um, it's not even being there. It's the anticipation on your way in and that that surge of, oh, how well are we going to do? And talking to your buddy in the car on the way there. And, oh, I'm, I'm hoping this will work. I hope that will work. And then on the way back and blaming the dice and, <laughs> and regaling everybody with the, uh, you know, with, with the stories of the day, even though they probably heard them like four times. And that that camaraderie, that that. Uh, just those just those hours literal hours in the car of doing whatever the hell it is in that car while you're while you're in the way there and back again i mean you know the uh the lord of the rings said it right that should have been the uh the name of the book right uh, i i think in that you know, little fellowship as your uh, the fellowship in the car as you're yeah. when they're well, we back need- we, we need four more uh, people for the murder garage. So, uh, you know, if you could take the chloroform, I mean, the uh, laughing, I mean, the, um, um, the, the nothing, the, the, uh, if you can, if you can put up with me and, and my sense of humor and, and, and Nathan and the two of us being. Oh, know, uh, <laughs> absolute, <laughs> yeah. absolute blast. But I, I, I think the fellowship is, is the nine Canadians with the Australian and the uh, brick going down. <laughs> Yeah, I get to the, no, I guess I'm I'm not even I guess I am the elf this time around. <laughs> and, and and Tim's the dwarf, so and Tim's the dwarf, so it works out just bloody brilliantly. <laughs> so I guess this uh goes to the final topic, which is what what are the future projects and events? Um we talked about crossroads, but what's where is this spooky murder ghost 2023? This this is um, at Black Knight Games in Hamilton. Okay. The the name is uh, totally a John McCready Creations TM. Um, John came up with this last year. Last year we actually had a spooker spooky uh, murder ghost. It was a special character who I I can't remember the I can't remember all the rules, but I will I'll tell you this. Um, it was dash fourteen. It did have a shooting attack. I did charge it twice in my first game versus Jesse. Um, double one it both times. Called the double one the, first, the I could have charged the back of something else. And I said, Jesse, I'm going to charge your spooky mur and I'm going to double one it. And he said, Ben, you are going to double one it. Don't do it. And I said, I got to do it, man. And double one it and lost that game terribly. There, as people in the Southern Ontario, I'm not going to mention here how badly I lost that game. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, this. We give out painting, we, John gives out painting um, trophies for the best spooky mur- murder ghost. It is a headless horseman this year. We don't know what the rules are going to be. We know that you can bring a 2300 point um, list. 
with the spooky murder ghost, Headless Horseman. Last year, the uh, the winner uh, was uh, Mr. Uh, James Smith, a murder garage guy, who won it by putting a Kleenex over top of a model, <laughs> putting holes in the in the Kleenex for eyes, writing the word boo on it, and taking that in as his paint, and it was beautiful. It sounds like the worst conversion ever. It was the best conversion ever. It was uh, absolutely magnificent. I, if anybody ever sees this picture or sees this model, I, I defy you to find something wrong with it when you pick it up. You will be, but wait, uh, no, it wins. Every, it did not matter how, how well anything else was picked. That thing was going to win hands out. But yeah, no, sorry. It's, um, it's, uh, as you have it here, three games, one day, um, we are apparently grudging the crap out of each other this yeah, time around. There's, there's five grudges right now, and you're playing Matt. And, and I can only imagine that Matt's going to be bringing his orcs. I, I expect that he will. Um, uh, Matt is uh, kind of known for playing those orcs. They're Rift Forge at the moment. Uh, his uh, battle wagons are the bane of my existence. Um, it's as if Alex Koos himself is driving the front carriage. <laughs> I... I have never killed. Uh, there is one that he has, which is again a beautiful model, where he has a a uh, giant pulling these two wagons while all the orcs are falling off the back. It's a beautiful diorama-looking thing. I cannot kill this thing. I put about sixty attacks into it, into its flank, and that was. I think we almost lost. Can't wait to fight him again. I honestly cannot wait to fight him again, um, and not kill that massive Alex Coos driven massive thing of uh, of battle wagons. I'm 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 definitely looking forward to this whole thing. It's like I said, Black Knight Games. Come down, have fun, play me if you really want to. I I wouldn't. I mean, you got to look at this for two hours. I mean. I don't know how my wife uh, my wife decides to uh, to look at it every day, but hey, do you have any other uh, painting projects that you're working on right now, Ben? I do. I have a super secret project that um, there's okay. two people that know what it is. We will uh, talk about that later when you're. We will talk about this later. Out. My painting is terrible. I'm I'm actually slowly losing my sight, <laughs> which is terrible. Uh, the older you get, the and uh, my line of work, we we work in almost the pitch black. Like it is really the place I work in now. It's actually quite bright, but most of the places are caves that they kind of have something that hangs over top of you every once in a while to look in. So uh, yeah, I used to be almost passable, and now I'm I'm pretty terrible. Um, but uh, I get paid right. on my models. Right. That's that's all that matters, right? No oil is your friend. <laughs> Super secret plan coming about. So. But I do have my super secret plan coming. Well, Ben, thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, thank you. Man. Greatly appreciated. And I look forward to seeing you again at Crossroads if I don't get down before then for a practice game in September. I'm I'm hoping we all get to, to go one more time while we're in here and maybe somebody accidentally gets hidden in the floor. Maybe. So uh, thank you very much. And I will see you then. See you soon, mate. Bye. Bye.